Valentine's na! May plano ka na ba? Siguro sa sabi ng iba sa inyo, Oh, sneaky! Ako pa ba? Siyempre, may plano na ako. Plano kong matulog. Itutulog ko na lang lahat ng sakit na nararamdaman ko. Grabe naman yun! Ako kaya, tanungin nyo ako, Dali, ano kayang plano ko? Kasi meron talaga eh. Coach, eh, tanungin mo ako, anong plano ko ngayong Valentine's? <laughs> <laughs> Yan, may plano kasi talaga ako. Kaso, iniisip ko kasi baka isipin nyo, ang yabang ko naman. Coach Nikki, ikaw na talaga ang haba ng hair mo. Hashtag sana all. Kasi ito yung totoo. Ever since talaga, may Valentine's date talaga ako. Ever since. Totoo, walang palya. In fact, kahit nga nung pinanganak ako eh, marunong na akong mag-date every Valentine's. Paano yun? Simple lang. Kasi every Valentine's Day, birthday ng tatay ko. Yan. Kaya may plano kami ng family ko to go out every Valentine's Day. Bakit? Sino ba nagsabi na ang date para lang sa magjowa? ba? Diba? Siyempre, pwede rin naman yan for the family. So anyway, kung nandito ka, you are with our uh, with us right now watching our YS, whether may plano ka or wala, buti na lang nandito ka. Kasi meron kaming isi-share sa inyo na plano. And the good thing about this plan is this, you can actually apply this not only during Valentine's Day, but even for the rest of your lives. Last week, if maalala nyo, we ended in John 15 verse 12. Sabi natin doon, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Love one another includes loving your friends, your family, sige, sama mo na rin pati boyfriend or girlfriend mo or mga kaibigan ng bawat isa sa atin. In fact, kahit ang kaaway mo, that includes them here. But today, we'll talk about the relationships that we all have. Lahat tayo, bata man or matanda, we all have this relationship. And this is our relationship with our family. Today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Whether you're in good terms with your family or hindi. I want to read from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 17. It says here, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Question, who is this Joseph that this verse is talking about? Sino tong mga magkakapatid na to? And bakit sobrang takot sila kay Joseph? Who is the father? Who is their father that recently just died? You know, maraming questions na pwede nating i-ask and we cannot fully understand itong verses na binasa natin without going back to the previous chapters in Genesis. In fact, I want to encourage all of us to read Genesis chapter 37 up until 49. And from there, you will understand kung ano yung nangyayari dito sa chapter 50. Of course, limited lang yung time natin. Kaya again, encourage, I'm encouraging you guys to read it on your own. But here's the story para maintindihan natin. First question, who was that father who just died? It was Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph. And he and Jacob has actually 12 sons. Okay, magkakapatid sila. Isang dosena. They were a big family. And just like any other family, they're not perfect. Tama ba yung family mo, family ko, even the families in the Bibles are not perfect. They go through conflicts, they go through character issues, they go through challenges, struggles, even breakthroughs as well. But here's what happened. One of the problems sa family ni Jacob is this. Jacob has favoritism. Yan, baka yung iba sa inyo nakaka-relate na kayo dito ngayon pa lang. Ang pinakapaboritong anak ni Jacob ay si Joseph. And that's the reason why the rest of the brothers, most of the brothers of Joseph, they were jealous, they were angry about Joseph. Kasi lahat ng favor binibigay ng tatay nila kay Joseph. 
And this even came to a point, listen to this, this came to a point na itong magkakapatid na to, they plotted to kill Joseph. Imagine, sarili nilang kapatid, they planned na patayin siya because of their anger, because of their jealousy. But during that time, instead na patayin nila si Joseph, nagbago yung plano nila. Ang ginawa nila, binenta na lang nila si Joseph sa mga Ishmaelites. Now, imagine Joseph right now. Itong mga magkakapatid na nagplano nito, nagsinungaling pa sila sa tatay nila na si Jacob. Sinabi nila, patay na si Joseph. Okay, inatake siya ng isang wild animal. Hindi alam ni Jacob na ang ginawa nila ay binenta nila yung paboritong anak. After that, yung mga Ishmaelites, binenta naman si Joseph sa Egypt. Okay? And so, Joseph now become, became the proper, property of Potiphar. He is the captain of the guard in Egypt. Sino sa atin, when we hear stories like this, minsan ang reaksyon natin ganito, ay grabe naman yun. Sinong matinong tao makakapag-isip na gawin yun? Imagine, their own flesh and blood. Pinagplanuhan nila na patayin, tapos binenta pa nila, and nagsinungaling pa sila sa tatay nila. You know what? Minsan we react to stories like this. It's as if, grabe, kung ako yan, hindi ko magagawa yan. But you know, the truth is this. We are all capable of doing the same thing. Anong ibig sabihin ko doon? Let me give you an example. Sino dito sa, sa bahay kapag um, andyan na yung mama at papa nyo, tapos dala, may pasalubong sila, eh ito yung paborito yung chips na magkakapatid. Tapos ikaw ang unang nakakita. So ang ginawa mo, kinuha mo tong chips na to habang hindi nakatingin yung mga kapatid mo, tapos dinala mo sa kwarto. Tapos ikaw yung nag-enjoy. Ikaw yung umubos. Di mo na pinakita sa kanila. We can, you know, all of us have that kind of tendency you know, to uh, be greedy or malamangan natin even yung mga kapatid natin. What else? Sino dito, you've already said this to yourself. I wish I could be just like ate or kuya or maybe your younger sibling kasi siya yung mas matalino, siya yung mas ma- maganda, siya yung mas guapo. I wish I can also make my parents proud. What else? Sino dito, Yung aasarin mo yung kapatid mo pag hindi nakatingin yung mama mo. <laughs> yung tipong, oy, wala si mama, wala si papa. Ako, ngayon, may pagkakataon na ako, asarin kita hanggang mapikun ka. Tapos pag biglang nagsumbong na yung kapatid mo, tapos sasabi na mama, oh, ano nangyayari? Oh, wala akong ginagawa dyan ha, taimik lang ako dito. <laughs> yung minsan nagsisinungaling ka pa para lang maasar mo yung kapatid mo. You see, it may not be exactly the same tulad ng ginawa ng mga kapatid ni Joseph sa kanya. But it's still the same. You know why? Because it's rooted in sin. Whether being greedy, being jealous, or wanting something that is not yours, it's all rooted in sin. So, nung nasa Egypt si Joseph during that time, the Bible tells us that the favor of the Lord was with him. Si Lord nasa kanya, yung favor ni Lord nasa kanya, even favor from men. In fact, during the time na nasa Egypt siya, to the point na he became the second most powerful person in Egypt. What do I mean by that? He was well respected, marami siyang possessions, ngayon nagkaroon siya ng sariling servants niya. In short, parang nasa kanya na ang lahat. And he was in charge of all the resources in Egypt. Imagine a person who has who became successful. Yung akala mo, nako, tragedy ito mangyayari sa kanya. But God has turned it around and he actually became successful in Egypt. But then something ha- happened in Egypt and dun sa mga kalapit na lugar ng Egypt. There was a famine. Okay? Or sa Tagalog, taggutom. So, naghirap yung mga tao, nagutom yung mga tao, wala silang ma-harvest. At kasama sa mga naapektuhan ay yung family ni Joseph. I think you know already where this story is coming from. So, si Jacob, inutusan niya yung mga magkakapatid, punta kayo sa Egypt kasi nabalitaan ko doon may supply. Punta kayo doon, bumili kayo para may makain tayo at para makasurvive tayo. Di nila alam, nandun si Joseph sa Egypt. Ito na, 
Imagine what's gonna happen next. Question. Kung kayo si Joseph at nakita mo yung mga kapatid mo na nag nag uh, nagpatapon sa iyo, nagbenta sa iyo, naglayo sa iyo sa family mo at alam mong masama ang motibo nila sa sa iyo simula noong umpisa pa lang. Kung ikaw si Joseph, anong gagawin mo pag nakita mo yung kapat, mga kapatid mo paparating sa iyo? What would you do when you see your brothers? What would you feel if you see your brothers who have wronged you? I think no marami sa atin dito, we can already imagine a lot of things sa scenario sa mind natin. Maybe if you're Joseph, maybe ang sasabihin mo, ay grabe, pagkakataon ko na itong maghigante. Revenge na to. Parang sa mga teleserye na napapanood natin, di ba? Babangon ako, sabi nga ni Coach Adrian. Right? Maghihiganti ako. Maybe for some of you, ganun na yung iisip nyo or naiimagine nyo. Maybe some of you would think, ay, eto na, si Joseph... He will do the same thing dahil nung katulad nung ginawa sa kanya. He will reject them. He will send them away. Hindi niya sila papansinin. Or maybe for some, ang na-imagine natin, mamatahin sila ni Joseph. Pagtatawanan sila ni Joseph, oh, ganito ginawa niyo sa akin. Tignan niyo kung nasa ako ngayon. Sounds familiar? Di ba marami sa families ngayon? Even in the past, there are a lot of conflicts na minsan di natin na-imagine na mangyayari, but it actually happens. But you know what? That's the reason why when we go back to chapter 50 verses 15 to 17, dito natin maintindihan kung bakit takot na takot yung mga magkakapatid kay Joseph. When Joseph got reunited sa mga kapatid niya, in fact, pati sa tatay niya at sa uh, kapatid niya na isa pa, ang nangyari doon is this, when they got reunited, a few, uh, uh, sometime after that, namatay si Jacob. Okay, namatay yung tatay nila. That's why yung magkakapatid, bigla silang nag-usap-usap, nako, ano nang gagawin natin? Patay na si papa, patay na si tatay, baka balikan na tayo ni Joseph. That's why they were so afraid of him. But look at this, in verse 18, sabi doon, His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. Sa sobrang takot nila, they humbled themselves before Joseph. At even sinabi na nila, servants mo na kami, Joseph. But verse 19, look at how Joseph responded. He said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus, he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Are you guys still with me? And dito po ba kayo? Nakikinig po ba kayo? Look, look at what's happening right now. Grabe yung story ng family na to. What does this story in the Bible tell us about our families today? Here are some of the things that I want to share to all of us. Number one is this. Sin destroys our family. Ang kasalanan ang sumisira sa ating pamilya. Jacob has favoritism. Masyado niyang paborito. Yung isa niyang anak compared to other brothers and sisters. Second is this, the brothers were very jealous. Yun yung sin sa heart nila. They were greedy, they were prideful. And that made them do what they did to Joseph. Kala nyo si Joseph walang kasalanan. He also has sin. You know what? Do you know that Joseph was also prideful? Masyadong ma-pride si Joseph. He's actually no hero sa story na to. Nagkakamali kayo kung ang iniisip nyo si Joseph ang bida sa story na to. No. And I'll tell you more about that later. You see, when we look at our families, in fact, when we look at your own heart, yung buhay mo, yung puso mo, what are the sins that God is exposing in your heart? What are the things that sins that God is exposing in your family? Let me tell you this, huwag nating mamaliitin ang kasalanan. You know why? Because it has the ability to destroy your relationship with your mom, with your dad, with your brother, with your sister, or even to our other relatives. 
ifahayaan natin yung kasalanan na maghari sa puso natin, it will destroy our relationship with our family. Ifahayaan natin na ang kasalanan ang manguna. Instead of surrendering our lives to God, talagang it's gonna be very problematic. We should hate sin. I want to tell this to all of us. Listen to this, everyone. Hindi ang tatay mo, hindi ang nanay mo, hindi ang kapatid mo, ang kalaban mo. Hindi sila ang kaaway. Alam mo kung sino ang kaaway? The real enemy is Satan himself. Ever since the beginning, the plan of Satan is to destroy every family. Just look at Genesis. Just look at the life, the family of Adam and Eve. Sin destroyed their family. If I don't know if you realize this, by the way, kung mapapansin nyo, family is the only relationship na hindi natin pinili. Our families are God-given. Our families, it's God Himself who has given them to us. Wala tayong choice. And that's why the enemy wants to destroy our relationship with our families. Alam niya na galing kay God tong relationship na to. That's why the second point is very important. That every family needs God. Ang bawat pamilya, kailangan natin si God sa buhay natin. You see, there's no perfect family. Yes or no? Kahit yung mga family na nakikita natin sa TikTok, sa IG, or yung mga nilulook up natin na family, whether that's a Christian family or not, there's no perfect family. You see, hindi natin standard ng isang matatag na pamilya kung ano yung nakikita natin sa social media. No, I hope that's not your standard of a strong family. I hope that you will always go back to the Word of God dahil yung batayan natin of a strong relationship with our families will go, will come from the Word of God. Family was originally designed by God. Si God ang nagsimula ng pamilya. God has a purpose for families. You know what? Not only that, God also has a specific role for each member of the family. Maging tatay man yan, si nanay man yan, o tayong mga magkakapatid, even our grandparents, meron tayo kanya-kanyang role na binigay ni God sa atin. But when sin entered, nung pumasok ang kasalanan, it destroyed God's design. That's why, di ka magtataka, there's broken family. What else? Kaya may nangangaliwa na asawa. Kaya may nagre-rebelde na mga anak. Kaya may inggitan, may greed, may siraan. Why? Because of sin destroying the relationship of family. That's why we have to think again. If you will catch yourselves na pag nang may problema sa family, tas na nakikita mo yung sarili mo na you always blame others, kasi si nanay ganito, kasi si tatay ganito, kasi yung kapatid ko ganito, siya naman lagi nangunguna. If you catch yourselves like that, think again. Think again. Because one way or another, we also, we ourselves have contributed to the problem. I'm not just speaking to You guys, the mga anak, if there are parents also na nakikinig sa atin ngayon, let's think again. Every time na, na, na nakikita natin yung sarili, sarili natin that we're blaming others with what's happening. Again, that's why every family needs Jesus. Why? Because only Jesus Christ has the power to destroy sin in our hearts and sin in our family. In fact, He has already defeated sin when He died on the cross for us. That's, power, that's how powerful the cross of Jesus Christ is. Grabe no, nakakagigil yung sin, nakakagalit yung sin because He's destroying our relationships with our family. Next is this, kahit na ganun ang nangyayari, I want all of us to claim this. There is hope for our families. I want you guys to declare this with me. There is hope for my family. May pag-asa ang pamilya ko. Declare it with me. 
You see, we can find this hope in God alone. Pag binalikan natin yung story ni Joseph, Joseph has all the reasons para hindi ma-reconcile sa family niya. He has all the reasons, in fact, all the resources para gantihan ang family niya or kahit yung mga kapatid niya. But when, when uh, Joseph uh, came to Egypt, may ginawa si Lord sa puso niya. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba, Joseph was actually a prideful person. Kasi during the time nung bata pa siya at kasama niya pa yung family niya, God has given him a dream, a vision, that one day his whole family will bow down before him. But without knowing or understanding that vision, he, he shared it. Uh, sinabi niya yun sa family niya. But it turns out, it becomes like parang very prideful yung pagkakasabi niya. Kaya lalong nagalit yung mga kapatid niya. Even yung tatay niya nagalit sa kanya. But when he came to Egypt, God did something in his heart. He went through a lot. Hindi lang magagandang bagay yung nangyari sa kanya sa Egypt. No? He was evenly uh, uh, accused. Okay, wrongly accused, kaya siya nakulong during that time. But when everything happened to him, becoming separated sa, sa family niya, he saw and experienced how good God is in his life. God has taught him a lot of lessons. Alam niya na ang may hawak ng buhay niya ay ang Panginoon. He knew who God is in his life. Kaya nga sabi ni Joseph, di ba naalala nyo, verse 19, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? Alam ni Joseph, ako ba, ako ba yung magjudge sa inyo? Huwag kayong matakot, wala sa kamay ko na mag-bring ng justice, na mag, magbigay ng justice sa nangyari sa akin. He knew his place in the, in the presence of God. Sabi niya, verse 20, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Sabi niya dito, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Joseph trusted God and His plans. Okay? He knew that na yung ginawa sa kanya ng mga kapatid niya, mali talaga, kasalanan talaga. But hindi yun yung mas nagmamatter sa kanya because what mattered to him most was the power of God to turn things around. Yun yung mas mahalaga kay Joseph. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. Ang ganda na sinabi dito sa Tagalog Bible. Totoong nagplano kayo ng masama sa akin, pero pinlano na ng Diyos na magdulot iyan ng kabutihan. Pinlano na ng Diyos na magdulot iyan ng kabutihan. Question, kamusta family mo ngayon? Kamusta ka ngayon with your family? May hinanakit ba? Watak-watak ba? Gulo, ang gulo ba ng family nyo? It's so impossible to be reconciled. Are you just wishing that you're part of a different family na lang sana? Well, let me tell you this. God can, th- can turn things around. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up praying for your family. Ask the Lord, Lord, tulungan mo ko na mahalin yung family ko. Lord, tulungan mo ko na maintindihan ko at malaman ko kung ano yung ginagawa mo sa family ko. Lord, tulungan mo ko na mag-pray sa family ko. Lord, help me to move in the opposite spirit. If, if in the family, the spirit is anger, hatred, and forgiveness, Lord, help me to move in the opposite spirit that I will move in understanding, in gentleness, in kindness, that I will move in the spirit of forgiveness. God can turn things around. I want to end with this. You see, from the time of the Bible up until now, and even up until the future, I want to say this to all of us. For a family to be stronger, for a family to thrive, you know what's the secret? The secret to that is this. It's all by the grace of God. Hindi yun nakabatay sa dahil ang galing nating magplano, ang galing nating magulang, ang, ang bait natin ng mga anak, sobrang masunurin tayo, hindi tayo nagkakasala. No! 
It's all by the grace of God. And I dare to declare this to each and every one of us, to our families, that by the grace of God, our families will be reconciled. That by the grace of God, yung relationship mo sa tatay mo will be reconciled, will be restored. That by the grace of God, you will be able to forgive yung mga kapatid mo, yung mga magulang mo, that by the grace of God, you yourself will be able to ask for forgiveness. It's all by the grace of God. And it doesn't happen just once, but it's everyday walk with the Lord. It's by the grace of God. You know, an illustration that I want to share to all of us is this. Minsan, para tayong itong picture na to that I will show right now. Okay, yung tela na yan. Pag nakita nyo, at tatanungin ko kayo, anong nakikita nyo dyan? Can you explain to me what, what can you see? Right? Many of you would say, it doesn't make sense, Ate Nikki. Wala kong maisip kung ano ba yung, uh, ano ba yung ibig sabihin niya ng nasa tela na yan. You know, sometimes when it comes to our lives, especially in our relationships with our families, there's a lot of things that we cannot understand. Sometimes we even ask God, Lord, bakit ba ganito nangyayari sa family namin? Di ko maintindihan, bakit, bakit kami pa? Bakit ganito? Sana hindi na lang. Sana sa iba na lang. You know, sometimes we don't understand, we, it doesn't make sense, the things that are happening to us. It's because most of the time, this is the only part that we see. But for God, it's different. Let me show to you this picture. Little did you know, ang ganda pala ng ginagawa ni Lord. There's something beautiful that God is doing in the midst of our family. Only if we will let Him do His job. Only if we will surrender our lives to Him. It's true that it's the work of the whole family. Pero maybe for some of you, especially to our students, ikaw pa lang sa family mo ang ang nakakakilala kay Lord. That's why, sabi ko nga kanina, di ba, meron kaming plano na isi-share sa inyo. At itong plano na to, hindi lang para sa Valentine's, but even for the rest of your life. This is the plan. Continue to show your love to your family. I don't know how you will show your love. Maybe, sabi ka ng I love you. Maybe, pagsilbihan mo yung family mo. Ngayon naman, ikaw magli- maglinis sa bahay. Ngayon, tulungan mo yung nanay mo. Sabihin mo sa kanya, I appreciate you. Maybe, tulungan mo yung papa mo. Ikaw yung mag-prepare. Magbigay nung chinelas niya pag dumating siya sa bahay, galing sa trabaho. I don't know what it is. But I challenge you, continue to show your love to your family. Lastly is this. Don't give up praying for your family. Pag-pray mo, Lord, sana makakilala ang buong family ko sa iyo. Pag-pray mo yung sarili mo, Lord, I pray that I will be a witness. Maging patotoo ako sa kanila na totoong buhay ka at kumikilos ka sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin. Family, it's a gift from God. It's a blessing from God. Don't give up on your family. Because God is not giving up on you. Let's pray right now. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for your word for us. Lord, sobrang hindi talaga kasha itong oras na meron kami ngayon just to talk about and dive in more into your word and makita namin kung gaano kaganda ang plano mo at disenyo mo sa isang pamilya. But also, Lord, we acknowledge kung Anong ginagawa ng kasalanan sa buhay namin, sa mga relationships namin, especially sa family namin. Lord, ngayon na binuksan mo ang puso't isipan namin, Father, I pray for all of us that we will not give up on our family, that we will fight for this relationship. Maybe it's not externally, but in fact, Lord, more on the internally, more on the spirit, Lord. We will fight it in prayer. Pagdadasal namin yung mga magulang namin, pagdadasal namin yung sarili namin, pagdadasal namin yung mga kapatid namin. Kasi Lord, alam namin na mahal mo ang bawat isa sa amin. Lord, even right now, I pray that there will be restoration. 
Lord, for every person who is watching right now, hinihipo mo ang bawat isa sa amin, yung puso ng bawat isa sa amin. Hindi lang kami, Lord, but every family represented. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare that by the grace of God, families will be restored. That by the grace of God, there will be forgiveness. That by the grace of God, in the future, when we have our own family, Lord, Pagkakalooban mo kami ng family na magsisilbi sa'yo. Pagkakalooban mo kami ng family na nagmamahalan. Pero isang pamilya na mananatili sa pag-ibig mo, na mananatili sa grasya mo. Lord, thank you that it's all possible that we can put our hope in you. This is our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to invite all of us right now. Let's worship God. We're going to sing this song, Amazing Grace. And I want you to pour it out all to the Lord. At ma- maisa puso natin, Lord, it's all by your grace. Let's all worship God right now. Amazing grace, how sweet Saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see It was grace that taught Chains of gold, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. My 
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. Lord, we thank you, God, for the powerful time of worship. Indeed, Lord, it's all by your grace. It's by your grace that we can be saved. It's by your grace na magkakaroon kami ng relationship sa'yo. And even those na wala pang relationship sa'yo, Lord, ine-extend mo yung grace na yon so that we will have a relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Not only to us, but also to our families, Lord. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Tinatanggap namin ang pagmamahal mo at ang grasya mo. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, I don't do this all the time, but I want to say this. If you are here and you have been blessed by this message and you need someone to talk, you, to, talk to, you need someone to pray for you, Please do message us in our Facebook pages or kung saan mo man to nakita, whether sa YouTube. Please send us a personal message because we want to pray for you and we want to connect with you. God bless you guys and I hope to see you even for the next two weeks as we continue to talk about love and relationships. Bye everyone. See you next week.